This is like magic. What you speak is what you feel. So you're squeezing till you feel the tension. Then that's a good time. Why is body language so important? So this is a very old research that was done in 1971, but it is still holding true. We are talking of how do I make an impact from verbal communication? Katagarne ken komada mang balapayama gati karanne. Katagarne kota balamay balapayama gati karanne nang me tunamati endo ne verbal, paraverbal, nonverbal. When I am talking, if I am to make an impact from what I am saying, I have to have three things: verbal, paraverbal, nonverbal. According to this graph, which one has the biggest impact? Non-verbal. Non-verbal is body language. Dakinade. That is why even gestures is more important than no gestures. Because then the, the, the audience is not only getting sound, you are also getting sight. And it helps you to keep your attention. Because we like when things are moving. Not in a distracting way, but when it makes sense. Verbal, paraverbal, non-verbal. So from this you see that the verbal, the words we are using, api katagana vachana, katagana vachana and ethivana balapayama siya nathak pamanai. The impact from the words we use is only 7%. I will demonstrate this, I want two volunteers. You don't have to do anything, I am only going to talk to you. Can I have two volunteers? Okay, so we have Tusita as one volunteer and we have Hasela as another volunteer, right? So Tusita, your work we have found is really bad. <laughs> Right? It's like, uh, I think the distribution, supply chain is all like fallen down. It's really bad. So I spoke to HR director also and we decided to let you go. So from Monday, you don't need to come for work. Right? All right. Okay. Well done, Dushita. All the best. Huh? Well done. Thank you, viewer. Right? What happened here? What happened to Dushita? He's, he's, he's lost his job, right? Job begane. But he's very happy. You can see, right? Why is that? The words I said did not match with the balance 93%. The balance 93% didn't match with the words. Hasela, you are the best person that we have in the back. Best person. I want you to continue working exactly like this. I want more people like you. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Very proud of you. Now go and continue to work like this, Hasela, because you are a fantastic guy. Well done. Now what did I do with him? Praised him, right? But, you know, initially, shock. Because what's happening here, right? Because 93% is not matching with the 7. So you are more convinced with the 93 which is the paraverbal and the nonverbal. Are we clear? That's what is shown in the graph and we saw in reality also. Match Not that words are not important. We are not saying that there is no impact from the words. It's just that there is less impact from the words. Do you understand the difference? No impact, less impact. If I say, Kalani, you are good. Is it a good thing? Good or bad? Kalani, I'm saying you're good. Is that a good thing? Yes. If I say, Amila, you are great. Now who is better? Amila. He say, Gayan, you are fantastic. Now who is great? Gan. I say Buddhika. You are awesome, Buddhika. Awesome. Subiri. Now you see, is Kalani bad? No. But different words have different meanings. Have different, you know where those meanings are coming from? It's coming from the vibration of the word. So when Steve Jobs was launching a new Apple product, he didn't come and say, today we are launching a really good phone. So today we are launching a phenomenal product. And the audience said, oh, phenomenal. Oh. This must be great, right? Because before, even if you are showing you, he's telling it's it's great. So we have to also use our words carefully. Words have meaning. Choose the words. Even if you're praising a child and see, okay, good work. Father said, good work. I say, wow, that's really fantastic. Well done. Supiri vedakkara. Right and see, it's a different energy that you're getting from the words. I will say, you know, my hobby. I have a very, you know, it's a it's a okay hobby I'm having. Nobody is going to want to do that hobby. If I say, wow, I have a, something really exciting to share with you. It's so fantastic. Everybody's What is so fantastic? Right? Tell me also because I also want to know. So your words do have meaning. We have to choose what are the words we are using. So the next time we talk about a hobby, see what are the special words we can use to make that hobby more exciting. So that is called using sensory specific words versus using what is called abstract words. So don't use abstract words. Use sensory specific words. For example, let's say I go to dialogue and say the dialogue guy is telling me, you know Sanjeev, uh, so he's trying to sell me 5G. Let's say he's trying to sell me 5G. So I said, you tell me what is 5G? 
No, Sanjeev, it's really fast. Now, what is really fast? That's an abstract word. What is really fast? But if you use sensory specific word, right? So now the guy says, Sanjeev, you know what really fast is? Sanjeev, what's your favorite movie? So he'll we'll ask, Vichitra, what's your favorite movie? Sosha and Kredemsha. So I say, okay. So Vichitra, you want to watch Sosha and Kredemsha? You know what 5G is? It's so fast, Vichitra. You just select the movie, you press the button to download, and before you can sit down, it's downloaded, Vichitra. Hey, guy, really fast. Now, do you see? I use sensory specific word. Video ke voila, botto mobile, in the ganda this sala, video ke download vela. Anna sensory space. Ega hamoto mathe no, then no ni. Everybody feels what this is. If somebody says, you know, growing up we were really poor, what does that mean? What does that mean? We are really poor. What does that mean? It can mean different things to different people. You talk to one guy and says, so you are really poor. What does that mean? No, 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 you know. Growing up, we had only one car. Abhi ek car ekai tibi. Then thiye no thunak. Ekai. No, so in his eyes, that is what is. So you see, it doesn't it doesn't make sense, right? So what is really poor? We don't know. But if I tell you, you know, we were so poor that some days we didn't have money to go by bus to school. We had to walk. Now that is sensory specific, no? Because everyone can imagine what is walking three kilometers to school like. It feel you feel it. Sensory specific. So use sensory specific word. Using something very, very poor. That's abstract. Because it could mean different things to different people. Could mean different things to different people. But if I say this is what it means. I was so poor that we didn't have bus money to go in the bus. Sometimes we used to go to visit my grandmother. We used to live in Daiwala. Go to visit my grandmother in Vallavatta. So you go one way in the bus. Now you all understand what that means. That is sensory space. Then the second thing we have to have in verbal is use user friendly words, don't use jargon. Give me some jargon that we use for gas. Gas sec jargon neck man again. Propane and butane. But a banner though, yeah. You just call me propane and butane. Now I can think of butane can and you fan lovely again. When I use butane, do I become beautiful? You know? Now what can I if I think that way, what I will do next time I get a litro gas, I'll open put the gas to <laughs> mule gana, right? It sounds stupid. But that is jargon. So we have to use user friendly words. Now I had a boss in one of my earlier companies, and the boss's level of English was very high, right? Very proud of his English. His English standard is very high. The problem was whatever he told us, we didn't understand. But we were very proud of his English. He is also proud, Apit proud. Yeah, third number, Apit third number. Let's say it's uh, so now Damit the matter again. Sanjay, you know, swash, swash, we have to do this. I say, yes, yes, boss. Iliot, I will have to see that. What did he say? Oh, then, 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 but boss, get English now, Maru, ne? Ah, so communication is all about making sure the person you're speaking to understands what you are saying. You can tell him, though. If I'm talking to you and you don't understand, our kata can make a kissy, kissy, right? There's no point of my talking. By the way, you see, when we have humor, it's also nicer, right? You feel more comfortable. Even pistol joke, right? You feel uh, you feel nice, right? Even when there is a crazy joke, right? Use a friendly person jargon. So don't be like my boss. <laughs> Not only speaking in English, right? Recently we were at a company where there is some insurance company where the uh, one some uh, body in the company was talking to the staff. He was using such big singular words. I ha I have a distinction in singular for my O levels. I didn't understand anything he was saying. But I I thought his singular is really great. I'm sure people in the audience also didn't understand. So it's not about impressing people with your language. It's about knowing your audience, speaking to the audience, simple words you use the better. Because the audience said, Vadino. It's not using big words, it's not using complicated words. A good speaker can take a very complex subject and make it very simple. Complex subject, complex with you, complex subject, I understand the difference. So it has to be, we have to make sure audience understands. So simple, user friendly words. Now, Steve Jobs, when he was launching the iPod, iPod, music, iPod, right? It had one gigabyte of memory. One gigabyte memory. Okay. Now, can you explain to your grandmother or grandfather what one gigabyte memory is? Amma to tere. Ne. Tere. Amma make a one gigabyte memory thi, you know. One gigabyte. Bokad the pute kya. Tere ne. Do you know? Wasan the one gigabyte kya? Mitchell, Mitchell, Mitchell. Abhi tere ne. You know one gigabyte kya? So what did Steve Jobs do? Ek a simplify kare. Use a friendly word. You know. What is one gigabyte? One gigabyte is you can put enough music into this small thing for you to listen to on a journey all the way to the moon and back. Make it a Sindhu. 
බුදු දාන්න පුළුවන් හඳට ගිහිල්ලා එන්න තරම් අහන්න හඳට ගිහිල්ලා එන්න පුළුවන් දැන් මිනිසුන් තේරෙනවා ඒ කියන්නේ මෙච්චරක් සින්දු දාන්න පුළුවන් ඒකද 1 ගිගා බයිට් කියන්නේ ආ ලෙට්ස් සේ සම්බඩි සේස් මෙන්න ගෑස් ගෑස් ලීටර් මග 13.5 ලීටර් 12.5 සයි ඩොන්ට් අන්ඩර්ස්ටෑන්ඩ් ඉෆ් යු සේ නෝ නෝ සංජීව් දිස් 12.5 ලීටර් ඉස් මෝර් දැන් ඉනෆ් ටු ලාස්ට් යු 1 මන්ත් ෆෝර් අ ෆැමිලි ඔෆ් ෆෝ මෙන්න දැන් මට තේරෙනවා ආ යු අන්ඩර්ස්ටෑන්ඩ් ද ඩිෆරන්ස් යූස් අ ෆ්‍රෙන්ඩ්ලි වර්සස් ජාගන් නව ලොට්ස් ඔෆ් ටයිම්ස් යු ඩූ දිස් රයිට් ඉන් යෝ ඕන් ඉන්ඩස්ට්‍රීස් යෝ ඕන් කම්පැනිස් ජාගන් 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 කතා කරනවා සම්ටයිම්ස් යු ෆොගෙට් දැන් අ පීපල් ඉන් දැන් room who don't know the jargon maybe people who joined recent maybe finance people are talking about ratios and this that and the other there are other hr people there don't melow the agdan it happens right there are manufacturing people talking about how, how to make a solid tire or whatever etana hr in no make kattiye they don't understand they don't know the list so we have to always think right user friendly versus job and people love to hear story now when i told you about my boss and how he is jargon is english and all of that that's a story you all like to hear that so always bring in stories to what you're saying then people will understand and more what you are saying taman ka kiyana katha wata katha again right it can be either real stories or it can be something called found stories found story kiyanne tawa kawur hari kiyuwa eka man potaka kiyewuwa i read it in a book i heard someone telling that now i come and tell you the same story but it's a nice story then are the story i told you about steve jobs and the the, the one gigabyte uh, this thing i wasn't in the audience when steve jobs said this mama hitiye na so that's a found story ma meka auna koya i don't understand the difference i heard this story so stories right people love to hear stories bring the stories in to your in, into what you're talking now so far hobby hobby again kata karama stories kena ad so i you know i love playing cricket and then did you talk about a cricket match you played in i'll tell you a story right i'll tell you a story so it's a it's a found story again so have you heard of this company called mit millennium information technologies early it was by mit now it's lse lsec london stock exchange group so there is a story that tony virasinga one of the founders the previous ceo of the company he went to boston to sell the stock exchange software to the boston stock exchange so it took about 6 months to get the appointment boston stock exchange chairman ekak api lanka wenne kalu minister ne right ganna mat it took a while finally got the appointment so he goes in his plane his plane away goes in the plane to boston and gets ready is plus and present a 30 minute presentation ekkema hadala 30 minute presentation he goes in walks into the chairman of the boston stock exchange room let's say what shall we say mr smith's room <laughs> chairman of the boston stock exchange as soon as he walks into the room he can see mr smith is standing up and he's putting documents into his briefcase it looks as if he is about to leave <laughs> now tony has come all the from sri lanka for 30 minute meeting thank you man yan yana so obviously he got upset but he also had empathy so he didn't show that he was upset is mr smith i'm so happy to meet you he said mr veer singh i'm so happy to meet you as well but unfortunately i have to leave because i have been called by the let's say ministry of finance or something i have to go so yan de pe he has to go say so i'm so sorry now mr tony also realized this guy is actually genuinely upset about this because he it's beyond his control he has been called Right, so he said, "That's okay, Mr. Smith. I totally understand. I'll be in Boston for another week. Can we reschedule the meeting?" So Mr. Smith says, "Certainly, we can reschedule. Only thing, the earliest time I can give you is another six months from now." Then, what are you doing? So now, Tony thinks on his feet. He says, "Mr. Smith, that's fine. I understand. Can I talk to you till you get into your vehicle? Can I walk with you to your vehicle?" Of course, Mr. Veer Singh. Please, let's walk together. So now, from his office, he's walking to the elev- elevator. Elevator, he goes right down, and then from there, walk to the car park, get into vehicle. By the time he got into the vehicle, Tony has sold the software. So. So his presentation changed from a 30 minute powerpoint presentation to a 3 minute walk and in the 3 minute walk he would have definitely had stories as well to convince him to buy now that's the hallmark of a great speaker you are flexible you are innovative you you don't get stressed out you can think on your feet you have empathy you have understanding you have all these things and smart all if that happened to us what would you do then andala mr smith the gahala now i am that's that's very important right how do we change abracadabra have you heard this word abracadabra the magicians use it right abracadabra right actually this word abracadabra it's actually not abracadabra it's abracadavra is the actual word it's coming from a language called aramaic which is a older language than hebrew Now you know where Hebrew is. No? Hebrew katha karan ko idhar in in Palestine, right? They talk Hebrew, right? So it's an old language, Aramaic, very old, thousands of years old. In Aramaic, abracadabra means what I speak is what I create. So if I call my whole sales team together and say, ladies and gentlemen, we have a huge problem, and I don't know the solution, will the sales team be motivated? Will they be scared? Yeah, they are going to be scared because boss has come and said, we have a problem. I don't know the solution right it's like a president of the country comes and says we have a problem it's not my fault mama ne what's the solution mama dannet ne koi de anne mama dannet then ratama bhaya wenawani so what you speak is what you create if i come to my sales team and say guys 
We have a challenge. We have a challenge. Mama, my mama has the challenge. I am ready to face the challenge. Are you ready to face the challenge with me? I know we can get out of this for sure. I have a plan. I have a solution. There are a lot of opportunities. And what you speak is what you create. What you speak is what you create. You don't have to ask me. You don't have to ask me. You don't have to ask me. Let's say you go to a doctor. You have doctors like that. Right? What you speak is what you create. Doctor looks at Naveen's blood reports and says, Naveen, this looks terrible. You are in a very bad health status, Naveen. Naveen, how much do you eat? What you speak is what you create. Are you all understanding? The doctor looks at this. Naveen, this report is not looking too good, but I can definitely help you. We can turn this around. Naveen, right, tell me. What you speak is what you create. Abracadabra. Especially, what you speak is what you create in yourself. If you have to get up and make a speech, Charan or Vidun or Amasha, and you get up in, uh, in the front of the audience and think, I might forget what I'm going to say. What you speak is what you create. What will happen? You will forget. This is like magic, right? This is why it's, I, I put a magician there. This is like magic. What you speak is what you create. Taman katha ganne de tamai mamanni. Taman katha ganne de tamai mamanni. Anivare. Anivare. What you speak is what you create. <laughs> so it has not been happening only ye pere da. Meka me me aurudu siya ganang. Das ganang inda meka it has been happening. Human beings. What you speak is what you create. That is why this Aramaic is like 2000 years old. So we need to also practice our words. How are we using the words when we are talking? Right, which we will practice. So verbal 7%, paraverbal is 38%. What is paraverbal? Very good. Pitch checker. Tava? Vocal variation, control. Nah, eye contact is not. Speed variation, volume variation, tone variation, tone and pitch. This is pitch, pitch variation. So now, Lalin, we are going to talk about the next subject for two hours before we go for lunch. It's okay? Okay. It's okay. Lalin says it's okay, right? And then because we'll take another one hour for lunch, Amila, we will come back and we'll finish the program at 7 o'clock in the night. It's okay, Amila? Amila, okay, you are. Now, what I showed you there was tone and pitch. Pitch is low pitch, high pitch. If I say, Vasanta, Vasanta, I love you, Vasanta, I love you. More than it's upset again. Match when. It's a tone, nigga. Tone, nigga. That's the tone, right? You know, I, I love you. I told I love you. But that's a tone variation, right? If I say, Vasant, I love you, Vasant. Right? Then, hey, Vasant, would look happy, right? You understand what I'm, what I'm saying, right? So that's a tone and pitch. Inflections is, where am I putting a uh, emphasis on which word? If I say, I, I, I said you were fantastic. 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 The meaning changes based on where, which word I am emphasizing. That is called inflection. Volume, you know. Speed, you know. Pausing. Pausing is also important. Right? If we, call, if we just keep talking, 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 people don't have time to process what we are saying. Now I'm pausing. Which means you have time to think. So pausing is also important. And then resonance is resonance. Like that. Yeah? So what are we saying here? Can you hear the, the resonance? They say, if you pitch your voice a little bit deeper, then you normally speak, you sound more trustworthy. <laughs> so if this is my normal speaking voice and I reduce it a little bit to here, it actually becomes more impactful. I shouldn't go down to here. Now, if I'm talking like this the whole time, you think it's very artificial. So think of your pitch and a pitch again, put that deep current, make it a little bit deeper. So that's paraverbal. That's Robin Sharma, <laughs> who's also a very good speaker. Have you all read Robin Sharma's books? There's a lot of books. He wrote a book called The Leader Without a Title. He wrote some books called The Greatness Guide. He wrote a book called The Five Minute Club. He wrote a book called The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari. Interesting books, right? Pace of speech. How fast your speaking also matters. So the ideal speed that we could speak is, we should speak is about 190, 195 words per minute. If I speak as slowly as this, and so you see, this is what we are trying to say. And therefore, I will talk at this speed for the rest of the day. After a while, it will be very boring and you will lose all focus because it's too slow. It's like watching a movie in slow motion. Even if it's a very interesting movie, very exciting movie. Slow motion. Mama take up your dinner, Mister. When Ganda, 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 right? And and the people take up your dinner, the pasta, what do they Advertisement, that kind of. Matu sambandai. It's very boring. But also, if I'm talking very fast, so you see, what we're talking of here is pace of speech and influence. We have to talk at about 190 to 195 words per minute. That's the best speech to be. It's too fast. You can't understand what I'm saying. 
So we have to get a speed in between that, not too fast, not too slow. Are you understanding? And what, what they say is it's about 190, 195 words per minute. If you are interested, go and watch this talk. It's a TED talk. If you search on YouTube, you can write it down. A TED talk by this guy called Hans Rosling. He's talking most of the time at the good speed to speak. Average. He's speaking between 156 to 218. But average, that's about a good speed to speak if you want to hold your audience. Have you heard of TED Talks? Very interesting, 18, just 18 minutes. YouTube, millions of views. Because you can learn such a lot of stuff as well. How many of you speak on the phone? <laughs> All of us do. You can try this maybe when you have some time. Take your phone and record yourself saying hello. Take your phone and record yourself saying hello. Think, think record, record. Hello, hello. And then record yourself saying hello again with a smile on your face. Hello, hello. And you'll, you'll understand that your tone changes when you smile. When you're speaking on the phone, the other person can't see you. But they can hear your smile. And this has actually been backed up by data, backed up by research as well. So when you pick up the phone and talk to someone, smile. Your tone changes. The person you're talking to feels that you are more friendly, more open. Amasha we've been saying to smile, right? Because Amasha has a lot of calls for us, right? So when she's calling people, hello, hello. Hello, hello. There's, there's a difference. Do you hear that? Yeah. Just the fact, fact, act of smiling creates a difference in your tone. This is an interesting point. Speaking on the phone also, make sure that you are smiling. Something I also do is if I'm talking to someone who I feel uh, I need to give a lot of attention, a lot of focus to, I would stand up and talk. Because as soon as I stand up, I'm more alert, right? I'm more active. I'm more awake. Have you noticed there are a lot of people, a lot of CEOs, a lot of very top level people. When they get a call, sometimes they are walking and talking. Have you noticed? Nobody has told him they are just doing this by habit. Why? When they are walking and talking, there is more energy. Versus sitting in one place, then oh, within them, what is happening? What's the problem? Oh, that's the problem. Okay. So speaking on the phone, also, also make sure that you are smiling. Right, let me show you a video clip. This is Martin Martin Luther, uh, Luther King. This is his last speech before he died. Before he was shot actually, right? Right, so this is uh, his last speech where he says, I can, I can see the future. I know what's going to happen. It I doesn't matter, I might not get there. But look at the words he's using. Look at his volume variations. Look at his tone variations, right? Look at how he pauses and just see, he's paraverbal. paraverbal gonna kata kara. Just look at his speech so that you will understand how we can uh, do this. All we say to America is be true to what you're saying on paper. <laughs> are you in China or even Russia or any totalitarian country? Maybe I could understand some of these illegal injunctions. Maybe I can understand the denial of certain basic First Amendment privileges because they haven't committed themselves to that over there. But somewhere I read of the freedom of assembly, somewhere I read of the freedom of speech, somewhere I read of the freedom of press, somewhere I read that the greatness of America is the right to protest and so this did not say we aren't going to let any dogs or water hoses turn us around. We aren't going to let any injunction turn us around. Days ahead. But it really doesn't matter with me now because I've been to the mountaintop. Like anybody, I would like to live a long life, longevity has its place. But I'm not concerned about that now. I just want to do God's will. And he's allowed me to go up to the mountain. And I've looked over. And I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you. But I want you to know tonight that we as a people will get to the promised land. So I'm happy 
that was his last speech. <laughs> Next day he was shot, <laughs> right? But did you did you hear the volume and the tone variations? You hear when he's pausing. Also, empathy is there. Now we can do that. Did you see how we uh, how we kept repeating certain phrases? What was that phrase? I I I I have seen this. I have seen this. I have seen this. I have seen this. What was the words used? No, the promised land was at the end. During the beginning, he he kept saying the same thing and adding on, same thing and adding on, same thing and adding on. Even his "I have a dream" speech is like that. I have a dream that our children can live together. I have a dream that there will not be any. Uh, uh, any race differences? I have a dream. And I have a dream, Kerala. He keeps repeat. I have a dream. I have a dream. I have a dream. I have a dream. We can do the same thing. So think, 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 think big. Think big. No one is ever going to say you are too good at speaker. You this guy is too good. Abhi da hagan indbe. Ya hunda vedi. Abhi da hagan indbe. Kaulu teva ema kyan? Hey, kaudhaat kyan? Right? No one is ever going to say you are too good. Right? So we can keep increasing, increasing. Right? So we discussed about verbal and paraverbal. Paraverbal is what we saw just now. Tell me again, what's paraverbal? Paraverbal is all about variations, right? Everything is about variation. Variations of what? Tone, pitch, volume, speed, silence. Variations of silence, pausing, nothing. And then the inflections. Where are we putting emphasis? Mine eyes have seen the glory. See, that's, that's so nice, right? To see a, a smile like that, right? Genuine smile. <laughs> so, what are the key points of body language that we need to keep in mind? So body language alone can be a subject taught for many, many days or many weeks. But if you look at what are the key things we need to say, do on a body language, what we have to keep in mind. Eye contact we already discussed. Gestures we already discussed. Right. Very important not to do is do not fidget while you are talking. That also we discussed. Don't be dancing around. And don't fidget means while you are speaking or listening, do not touch your ears, your nose, your eyes or your mouth. All of those are considered to be deceit gestures. So while Indika is talking to me, if I'm, yes Indika, that sounds very interesting. Tell me more about solid tires that telework. I'm sure your quality is very good. But I'm keeping my finger like that. Indika feels Sanjeev is not telling me the truth. Oh, ah, Varuna, yeah, yeah. I'm sure, Mepara, you can get the bonus. This time you can get the bonus. Bonus, ne? Oh, I'll give you a good bonus, Varuna. <laughs> Varuna will think, no, 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 no. Sanjeev is not telling me the truth. Oh, he's hiding something. Something is not clear. So if if somebody is talking to me and I'm like this, it's a Lairu is talking to me and I'm like this, Lairu will get the impression that I do not believe him. If I am talking and I'm like this, Lairu will get the impression I'm not telling the truth. So either way, if you are the leader or you are making a presentation or conversation or whatever, don't touch parts of your face. And also if you are having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with someone, don't touch that person's face also. So fidgeting and touching, don't. No shuffling and dancing, we discussed that. So hands in pocket, we discussed that also. Why should you not put your hands in your pocket? Yes. But more than that. There will be no gestures. If your hands are in your pocket, you can't make gestures. But they can any. No hands. You understand? Do you know why showing your hands increases oxytocin? We discussed this now. Right? We said eye contact increases oxytocin. Uh, using your hands increases ox Shaking hands increases oxytocin. Right? Do you know why this whole shaking hands thing was invented? You know, yeah, shaking hands was started. It was started in the old Roman days. 2000 years ago, they used to not shake hands like this. They would shake hands like this. They would shake hands like this. What are we doing while shaking hands? Checking for weapons. Ah, why? They are wearing the toga. No? Toga, okay. This arm is all bare. Like uh, maybe like the robes that some of our priests uh, 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 wear. So you can see it's a weapon. Maybe it's covered with cloth. They used to hide a knife. So when I come and do this, I'm checking. Ah, no knife. No knife? Good. <laughs> I trust you. You are not going to kill me. Do you understand? It's coming from there. Then podda podda then it became So skin to skin. When you are touching skin, you are creating oxytocin. But you have to squeeze the arm like you are squeezing a You squeeze a mango, right? So you are squeezing till you feel the tension. Then that's a good handshake. Do you see now? It's a good feeling, right? Thank you. So, that's why, uh, check in. Weapons they roll? Nah. Shape. Right. Okay, good. So, there is, there is always a, a reason. There is, there, is, there is history here, right? Also, when you are listening, yes. it's not nice to uh, 
keep your hands in the pocket. It's been that distressing that I... Uh, sure, sure. Sure, sure. Absolutely. So anyway, it's not a nice thing to do. But also people see when they don't see your hands, this is coming from genetics now, right? From thousands of years of evolution. If you don't see my hands, it could be that I have a knife in my hand. So I could come close to Gayan. You can't see my hands. Now Gayan, right? So therefore, if you can see my hands, you can see. Ah, nothing. So you can trust me. You can see. I'm open. I'm open. No, nothing. Right? You see? That's why when you walk into a hall, the first thing people are actually looking at you subconsciously is they're looking at the hands. So if you're walking in, you can people can see, ah, hands are open. If I'm walking like this, I'm walking like this, right? You can't see my hands, no. So therefore, then the trust doesn't come so naturally. Why is body language so important? Because body language was there long before there was language. <laughs> right? Before, before the human species could talk, we would still communicate with sounds. <laughs> <laughs> what to know, Nanny? You don't, you don't, you can, you can communicate. So that's because it's been there for longer, right? Even a small newborn infant knows to smile. Knows as soon as I smile, everybody around me also will smile. <laughs> so that's why body language is so important. We can't fight it, but we need to use it in the proper way. So the few things that we need to remember: don't fidget and be be conscious of where your feet are pointing. Also, now if I'm having a chat with Tusita. And saying, yes, two sitters. What you're saying is really interesting. But now can you see where my feet are pointing? It's pointing that way, which is it's pointing at the door. Which means I'm trying to go, but I'm telling you it's interesting. But he may get the impression, no, no, no. If it's so interesting, I'll be like this. Pointing my feet towards him. So people's feet don't generally lie. Which angle are your feet pointing? So that's something you can always try to see, right? And then, then the ladies do this sometimes, right? Who has a handbag. So let's say, let's say we are we are having a discussion with Indika and now suddenly I'm seated there. I'm seated with Indika. I'm having the discussion. So it's Indika, so Sanjeev, do you have some more time to discuss? Yes, yes, I have time, Indika. Let's talk some more. You know, handbag, right? Which is, no, I want to go now. <laughs> so the body language actually gives a lot of uh, clues. <laughs>